Secret. Mark Secret. Report to the front. Mark Secret. Report to the front. Hymn 294, everybody. As you're getting ready to keep on singing, stand up. This is where we actually start the service. That was just preliminaries right there. Hymn 294, my friends. Let's sing together. Hymn 294. Brother Mark's going to guide us in one day. Hey, what a blessing it is to see all of you. Still folks coming in. What a blessing. One day when heaven was filled with his glory. Test, test. Well, come on, man, my example is he. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he just. summer, right? You're going back to school. Everybody's a little chill this morning. Put your hand up. You say, I'm a little chill this morning. Let me see. All right. I'm not the only one then. That's, that's how it is. Okay. Listen, you guys, here's what we want to do is we want to get that chili out and we want to get the hot pepper in. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. You guys going to sing a little bit today. All right. So here's this. Listen, look just at that first phrase. One day they led him. Now let me say that. Michael's doing great, okay? <laughs> Michael's doing great. Everybody else got to raise their voice a little bit, okay? Let's try it one more time, baby. Here we go. One day they led him. Do it again real nice and loud. One day they led him. Okay, here we go. Dad, Mom, you ready? Here we go. One day they led him. That's it. There we go. That's first Baptist right there. That's first Baptist. I on the tree, suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer received. Love me, that's it. Dying, he saved me, buried, he carried my sin for all. Okay, here we go. One day the great good 
conceal him no longer. Oh, yes! Oh, one day the storm rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death we had come. Yeah, amen! Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. <laughs> My sins far away. Rising, he's justified, really forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glorious day. One day the trump. this cool video this is neat what is man that you are mindful of him and willing to give him your love a true example of how we should love your acts of kindness and compassion are such glorious sights to behold your love never ends or fails in the midst of heartache and pain you decide to comfort and restore the broken Never have I met a friend willing to lay down their life, only you alone. Even though you reigned supreme, you cared enough to get off your throne and humble yourself to love us. How great and how deep is your love. We didn't deserve it, but you loved us regardless. You surrounded the lost and lonely with love and comfort. There is so much to learn from your love. Inspiration strikes every part of my being when I am in your presence. While we were still stained by sin, you laid down your life for us, so that we might live in love. No greater love has the world seen or witnessed. Your love is perfect, pure and kind. Blessed are those who experience you. Love has a name. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Why don't we grab our Bibles this morning as we get ready. This is what we're going to be looking at this morning through the preaching Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 17. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 17 verses 23 through 24. So as we look at this, get ready to hear. And if, you're, if you can't quite understand what this is all about, get it in your mind. Have the questions and see what we get from the word of God this morning. And the preaching. In the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it, 
And it shall bring forth boffs and bear fruit and be a goodly cedar. And under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing. In the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree, have exalted the low tree, have dried up the green tree, and have made thy dry tree to flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Brother Garrett, come on, my brother. I'd ask for the ushers to come forward. We're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Of course, the tithe is what God commands of us. Ten percent of whatever we get, we're supposed to give to the Lord. And in reality, everything we have is of God. And it's amazing that he only asks of you ten percent. Ten percent. Everything you get is of God. Of course, we know that offerings are above the ten percent. And it is more blessed to give than to receive. So you give as the Lord leaves you and the Lord blesses. Uh, Brother Brad, would you please pray for us? Our Father and our God, how indeed grateful we are for the many ways you bless us. We thank you for the material blessings. And Lord, as we seek to be good stewards of the finances that you've given to us, help us to use those resources in accordance with your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen, brother Brad. Brother Michael's going to come and guide us. Those of you who want to be a part of the choir, but I got to tell you something. This is funny. You're going to laugh. How many of you have ever said to me, Pastor, I just, I can't believe that you are able to remember all those names. How many of you ever said that to me? Well, this morning I went over here to this dear couple and I called them completely different names than who they are. All right. Just to let you know, everybody's human. All right. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I'm such a bad person. Okay, here we go. Number uh, 336. Come on up, if you will. Yeah, come, dear ones. Hey, there is a fountain see. Yeah, filled with see. blood. Anybody that will. 336. 336. There is a fountain. That's it. Come on. Come on. I saw a couple go, ah, maybe I'll go. Do it. Come on. Yeah, it's all about the about blood. It. Come on. Yeah. There all about go. the blood. That's it. Let's sing it together.
first, first five. When I'll sing thy power to do it, do it, do it. I'll sing thy power your hymn book you go ahead and open your hymn book you got one right in front of you go ahead hymn 329 there's power in the blood brother mark's yeah. going to come again there is power in the blood sing it out strong this morning this hymn was a surprise to me that i'd be doing this this morning i found out during the during the welcoming so let's sing out the best we can would you be free from your burden of sin there's power More rapid. Here we go. Would you be wiser, much wiser than snow? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. The precious blood of the Lamb. On that last verse, on that last verse. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's one hey. power yeah. in the blood. Praise the Lord. There is power, 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 in the blood. Power, 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 wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. All right, have a seat, everybody, if you will. Time's coming. He's going to guide us through the announcement time. Yes, we have some stuff coming up. I wanted to start this pass around. Uh, thank you for coming here. Thank you for being here today. That Just pass that back. If you want to sign up, sign up. And uh, when it gets around to the back, to the overflow area, uh, Brother Jay, is that you back there? Yeah, why don't you pass it on to the back here, and it'll come up to the front. All right, so that everyone gets a chance there to check go. out yeah. what's going on for the Pastors Fellowship. That is September 6th is what's going around. So if you want to see about that, learn more about that, there's going to be the Pastors Fellowship time, okay? And you can be a part of that. It's not just for pastors. So you can just come if you want to, all right? Amen. But you can get involved as well. We're going to yes. have breakfast, lunch, and a great, uh, great hot word of God. Yes, that's right. So if we don't have hot breakfast, we'll have hot word of God, <laughs> all right? And today as well, praise the Lord. Uh, next Sunday, what is next Sunday? That's right, Pastor Michael, epic man. 
What's next Sunday, everybody? Epic involvement. Not just Pastor Michael, yes. all of us, everybody. Next Sunday, Epic, we're going to have the fair all set up. You're going to have the banquet all set up. You can be a part of that, too. I believe there's a sign-up back at the sign-up table for that as well. And then also, we're going to have missionaries that day. Yes. Big day. Yes. You'll see there in the bulletin. Does anyone need a bulletin this morning? Raise your hand. We will get you a bulletin. Miss Arlene needs a bulletin up here. We need some bulletin bags there. Thank you so much, Miss Sabra. I'm glad you're here. Mm. We prayed for you. I was keeping you in prayer. We were. Thank you so much. We were. Thank you, Miss Sabra. Hey, if you all noticed that, Sabra miraculously is here. Whoa! She's just in the emergency room, you guys. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the Lord got her straight so down, So that man. is Zeke and Sadie Jezek. Those are the missionaries. They are going to Vietnam. Woo. So get to know them next Sunday. Who are the missionaries this Wednesday? This Wednesday is a group of people that are really cool. I just uh, I can't remember. Very <laughs> cool group of people. So you, we don't even have to say their name. Just come out and see them. We're, you're going to be there anyway for the great time. Do you have a slide for time. Wednesday's missionaries? You don't have a slide. I didn't know about it until today. Oh, so. really? Yeah, sorry. Do you have a slide for missionaries from Wednesday? Uh, Brother brother Earl, who are they? The I, I, Something Tierra, isn't it? Santa Tierra, Salva Tierra, yeah. Yeah, from Ernesto Bolivia. Bolivia. He's going to be now. Get this. Guess what else is going on on Wednesday night? Now this is really going to blow your mind. Get this. We're going to do like two really quick songs. We'll have the offering, right? Jack, I can't believe you. How do you do? Can't this? believe you. This what guy have you done is now? working. No, listen to this. I have to point this out. This guy. In three days, is going to be working like 50 hours. And he comes to church on Sunday morning. Oh, now, you tell Lord. me if that's not amazing. I mean, that's he was up all is. night. He's going to be up all night tonight. That right there is dedication. Praise the Lord. Okay, anyway, praise the Lord for him. It's the Lord. You know, I realize. But Sal yeah. Salva Tierra is going to be here. But my son, Mark Seacrest, is preaching that night. The bearded wonder. The bearded wonder, man. I'm excited about that. It's going to be good. That is going to be awesome. Man, I... I us kids are going to miss out, aren't we, no, guys? No, no, no. The teens are actually going to be in here. Oh, yeah, the kids Yeah, the do kids. Miss out. The kids, the kids, kids not the older kid, yeah, yeah, kitty the kids. kids. Uh, kids. We're going to have a great time this Wednesday with the kids as well. We're not really going to miss out, are we, Emma? No. We're going to have a great time they'll earning have, badges, learning fun. about for the Word of God. And you're going to hear me preach, right? They'll have fun. That's the most exciting part. Why do we need to hear Mark preach? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whoa, oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Now it's sure to be a flop. That man. was, you know, we talked about self-image today. My problem is I think too highly of myself. <laughs> I, I must ask forgiveness and humble myself. The meet and greet for snack next, the first Sunday of the month, next month, that is so that you can come check out all the mentors and students, and you can fellowship at, right before school starts. The mentorship starts that, mo that Monday after that. All right, so that's going to be a great time. Students, you get to kind of talk with your mentors more about what's going to be happening that week for your first class and stuff. Mentors, you want to stick around for that so that you can encourage students that would like to be a, a part of that, get under some mentorship training. And that as well, if you want to get involved in that, you can get with Dad. You can, si you can find all the, there's also a sign-up sheet. You can see all the different mentorships. There's self-defense. There's home economics. There's hermeneutics, homiletics, preaching, Bible, all kinds of life skills as well as knowledge yes. training so Amen. that's going to be very exciting to be a part of you can ask pastor barry about that find out more about that from snack get all the details once you get plugged in all right and then uh soundboard team they're going to be meeting september 4th so that's going to be that day as well so that'll be right after the morning worship y'all that are in the sound booth you'll be able to meet real quick it's just, it's just right after the worship service, just a quick, quick meeting that they want to have, all right? So those are the things coming up. By the way, missionary, uh, Miss Robin, are you ready? Awesome, very good. You can go ahead and get, get, your song queued, get the song queued up for her. But the missionaries for this week are Dave and Sandy Warner to South Dakota and Daniel and Emily Ford to Moldova. So you can get their missionary letters over there on the, in the back in the lobby. Okay, let me just tell you real quick one other thing. Tonight, I'm preaching Soul Train. How many years? <laughs> Maybe at the 70s and 80s. All right. 
I'm preaching on the soul train. Ezekiel chapter 18 tonight. Get on the soul train. We'll be talking about the soul tonight. Big time, exciting times, very special moments. Ladies and men's meetings at about 4.30. You want to enjoy a time of discussion and getting to know some things. We're going to be doing ladies and men's meetings at 4.30 at 6 o'clock. Great times of fellowship, great times of social activity as well. There'll be some snacks over here, some soda, some coffee, things to do, enjoying one another. And then right at 6, we've got some really cool music tonight. Really enjoyable moments and a great message, I believe, will be a great blessing to all of you. Miss Robin, thank you so much. Go right ahead, my dear sister. Always happens. It's not his fault, it's the... This is just too cool. I mean, it is beautiful to see how many guests are here. And folks that are regular people have been traveling and getting ready for school and all of that. And we just, you know, we came together as a staff. We realized, you know, people got to have their breaks. And we figured, you know, it's one of them Sundays. And we didn't expect this. Praise Jesus Almighty. But Connors, Lakes, uh, Van Pels, Mulfords, uh, those of you who are here in families, individuals, uh, as we think of Victoria and Brian, what cuties, man, I tell you, they're just too sweet. The kids, the children, those of you who are new, what a... <laughs> I, called, I, I, I called Judy Robin this morning, you guys, just, 
Yeah, you say, Pastor, it's okay. They'll figure out your dunce, okay? In a little while, they'll get it. They'll get it. Go to Ezekiel, if you will, chapter 17. Be quiet, Garrett. <laughs> Ezekiel 17. Hijo mío. Ezekiel 17. He's my Spanish son. Press his promise to, to the sub. Of the word submission. We get to talk about submission today. You know, all the people who are really, really holy, they raise their hand and said, yes, I love the word submission. Everyone else is like, you're not going to actually preach on that, right? Oh, yes. Actually, it's just about every service, isn't it? Now, this message. Church, there are precious promises to those who are submissive. Stan, do you do some farming? At all, I mean, uh, Chris, do you do any farming? Yeah, are are you? St- I, I'm still at calling everybody by the wrong names. Okay, hey, listen, I love peppers. I mean, tomatoes. You know what I'm saying? This morning, how many of you are gro- growing peppers, tomatoes, uh, fruit, some kind? Yeah. Okay. So, how many of you? Ta- just yell it out. What you're growing in your garden? Let me hear. Squash. Squash? What? What did he say? Lima beans. Tomatoes? You like tomatoes? You know what, Camden? Listen, buddy. I am really glad that you were the one that yelled out cam- uh, tomatoes. All right? Because we're going to talk about Camden. To- uh, tomatoes today. <laughs> Just for a second. Tomatoes are some of the greatest things on earth. I love these little things. Now, we're growing these tomatoes what are, that are romaine. But they're only about that big, that long. They're what they are, they're like the kind you can pop right in your mouth. They're not exactly cherry tomatoes. They're a little bit bigger, a little bit rounder. So you can just pop that thing in there and chew away. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the only thing about them is I don't really know how to cut them so that I can get the salt in there first. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you love to put salt on your tomatoes. Okay, man, alive. These things. Now, some of them are out here because we have so many. But we'll have a big barrel right there at the beginning of our barrel. is not the right word. Big bowl of them right there at the beginning of our kitchen. And we'll, I'll just, all day long, I'll be popping those things in my wife, my mouth. My wife. My wife, now I know I'm messing up all over the place this morning. My wife told me when she was a kid that she ate so many tomatoes one time, she started to have trouble with her taste buds. To the point where they would like burn. You know that. But I want you to think about your gardens for just a minute today. Who in here knows that one of the greatest enemies to a garden are birds? All right. So are your tomato plants ever going to get to a point where they're producing tomatoes if they keep getting cropped off by the birds? It is the birds. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they'll reach and they'll grab. I don't know what they do at the top. Of them. What they do with them? They put them in their nests or something? It seems to me they're too, too tender to put in their nests. But they do this. These birds will crop off a plant. Now, last Wednesday night, We talked about Charles Dickens at the beginning of the message. And by the time we were going home, people were in the cars going out saying, what did Charles Dickens have to do with anything that you talked about? (laughs) So I'm going to make a strong correlation. No, Keith Hale, you were not the only one that did that. (laughs) I see people back here laughing too. Angie, you guys, they all, they're like, what did Charles Dickens have to do with anything? Alicia Hale's writing to me and saying, Dude, you got to get some coherency in your messages, man. What's up? So, all right, here's the deal. Listen, tomatoes, plants, birds. Got that in your head? Okay. This is a very clear line of thinking. (laughs) I could just go home right now. You guys are good, right? Let's say it again. The plant, the tomatoes, the birds. I mean, gracious, it's right there, right? But what it had to do with on Wednesday night was we were talking about how that our sin can put us in chains. And Charles Dickens, right at the very beginning, talks of Marley 
And Marley, who was put in chains because of the things that had bound him throughout his life, you guys feeling me on this? I just didn't say it all. I figured you guys knew all that, you know? Of course. You know, I just, it's in my mind. Why wouldn't it be in yours? <laughs> but here, ultimately, let me just tell you this. As you're looking at verse 3, there is no way you can miss this, okay? Ezekiel chapter 17. You actually starting in verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. Get this. Read it out loud. You ready? Verse 3. Here we go. And say, thus saith the Lord God, a great eagle with great wings, long winged, full of feathers, which had divers colors, came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. Connections. Did I just make one? Yes. Hey, applause. I did it. Nobody's going to clap. Okay, three. Verse four. Here we go. He cropped off. Look at this, Elise. I'm someday. I'm making connections. I'm making connections. Look, verse four. Look, he cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it into a land of traffic, which is Babylon. He set it in a city of merchants. Now, let me give you all of the background to this. Okay, Zedekiah is the king at this time. Zedekiah is at the top of the pinnacle of his career as a king. All right? The eagle with all the colors. And get this. Understand this is very much like our culture today. What's the big symbol of pride? Right. The rainbow. Okay? Everybody's like, oh, the pride. Should it be? No. But is it in our culture? Unfortunately, yes, it is. And in the time of Babylon... The multi-diverse, colorful wings of this eagle were also representative of all of these strange and odd diversities that were going on in Babylon at the time. And what happens is, Nebuchadnezzar comes, clops off the top of that cedar. In other words, he takes Zedekiah and cuts him down. Boom, cuts him down. Getting this? All right, now listen to this. And he carries him off into Babylon. He takes them into this particular culture where there's a land of traffic. What does that mean? What does that mean? Hmm? Merchandise, business, trafficking ships in and out, all kinds of stuff going on. Tell me if our country is not represented here. Tell me if that's not the case. This nation is full of traffic, full of things going on. And it says in verse 5, He took also of the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by the great waters and set it as a willow tree. This is not Zedekiah. This is the leaders of the nation. And he takes them and he plants them as seed all over the ground. And the Bible says that he's planted as if it were a vine. And they start to spread out and they start to proliferate in Babylon. Now read in verse 6 with me. You ready? Here we go. And it grew and became a spreading vine of low stature whose branches turned toward him and the roots thereof were under him. So it became a vine and brought forth branches and brought, shot forth sprigs. There was also another great eagle with great wings and many feathers. And behold, this vine did bend, bend his roots toward him shot forth his branches toward him, that he might water it by the furrows of her plantations. It was planted in a good soil by great waters, that it might bring forth branches, and that it might bear fruit, that it might be a goodly vine. Look at verse 9. Say thou, thus saith the Lord God, shall it prosper? Shall he not pull up the roots thereof, and cut off the fruit thereof, and it wither? It shall wither in all the leaves of her spring, even without great power or many people to pluck it up by the roots thereof. Yea, behold, being planted, shall it prosper? Shall it not utterly wither when the east wind touch it? It shall wither in the furrows where it grew. Get this. Every single time we rebel against the Lord, every single time we rebel against God, we're going to wither away. We're going to fall Apart. Now get and understand. Precious promises are to those who are submissive. How many of us would say in our hearts, honestly now, in our hearts, I am submissive before God. Okay, if you are, these are three things God is looking for. This is what he's looking for. He's looking for his plan being worked out in you. 
He's working, looking for his punishment plan. Punishment. Number three, he's looking for his power to be worked out in you. Now, these are three things he's looking for you to have worked out. His plan, his punishment, and his, his what? His Good. All right, so three. Ready? Here we go. Number one, he wants to work out his? He wants to work out his? He wants to work out his power. Get and understand. Have you ever had video training? Any of you? Have you? How many of you in your job, Adam, do they do this at Redner's? They do? They sit you down in front of a TV or something and they make you go through this video that's like 75 years old, right? People are still wearing like, uh, I don't know, whatever, you know, what they were wearing back then. You guys talk, know what I'm talking about? These video training times, sometimes we need them. God wants to put you in video training school, okay? Because where we're at in our lives, we need to be trained. How many of you get that? We need to be trained. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2 for just a second. 1 Peter chapter 2 and look at verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 3. We have a real problem with submission. We have a real problem with authority. We have a real problem with putting ourselves under God's control. We don't want to put ourselves... How difficult is it, for example, to put yourself under the authority of President Joe Biden? I hear the groans, I know. Now get this. It takes a lot to put yourself under the authority of some of just the representatives of Seaford. It takes a lot to put yourself under the authority of a governing body like our representatives and our Senate who you never know what they're going to do next. We're like, man, okay, we, they said they're going to do this, this, and that. And then for the next few years, what do they do? Just the opposite or nothing. That was a really good answer, actually. Looking at verse 3, look at this. It's so be that you've tasted that the Lord is gracious. Go on, if you will. Oh, pardon me. I am in the wrong place. Is that 1 Peter 2, verse 3? Okay. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. This is completely not what I wanted. Um, is it 2 Peter 2 and verse 3? Check this out. 2 Peter 2 and verse 3. Perhaps I put first and chose shall they was painted. Nope, that's not either. Verse 4. What does verse 4 say? That God spared not the angels. Okay, that's really, I am just messed up really bad. But in any case, do what the Bible says and submit to authority, okay? <laughs> uh, it does say it, and I'm trying to have, find out where it is in 1 Peter or 2 Peter. Maybe it was 3, 2. But in any case, go to Romans 13 and verse 2. I didn't want to use that same passage we use over and over again, but Romans 3, 13, pardon me, Romans 13 and verse 2. Romans 13 and verse 2 this morning. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Really, pastor? Really, pastor? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers? Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's tough stuff right there. Taking that and swallowing that is hard for me. How many is, is that difficult for you? To see that kind of need to submit. Now, here was the hard thing. Get. Zach is bad. How many of you know when you hear the word Babylon that throughout the word of God, this is a bad connotation? How many of you know that? It's a bad connotation. And here, God is saying, listen, he's saying to Zedekiah, submit to Nebuchadnezzar. Submit to Babylon. Submit to the leadership of this city. He's like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. What are you talking about? Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean I'm supposed to? He says, yes. I want you to submit to them. Now, this was God's plan. When God writes down his plan, he makes his plan clear. No matter how weird it is, listen to it. All right? It's his video school for training. And as strange as some of the things are that Redner's wants you to do, you need to do them, right? As strange as some of those things are that Walmart tells you to do, you need to do them, right? Who who others have gone through video? (laughs) 
And they tell you to do these weird things to these chickens, right? You're like, I'm supposed to do that to a chicken? Ah, right? Yeah, but you got to listen to them. Who down here? Somebody raise their hand. Somebody? Hospitals. Oh, man. There's got to be a lot of strange things they ask you to do in a hospital, right? And you're like, why? Uh, I don't really. But what do we do? You got to do it. You got to submit to it. You got to listen to them, man. Listen to them. In the HVAC business, there's a lot of stuff they tell you to do that you're like, ah, uh, what? Is that the case? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. How many of you know it must be hard for Jason to go into some people's homes? Okay. Yeah. I mean, he actually has a nose. You know what I'm saying? And some people act like they smell them. It must be difficult going into some of those homes. It must be difficult. You say, Pastor, are you being judgmental? Absolutely. And that shouldn't be. Sorry about that. <laughs> Titus chapter 3 and verse 1, if you will. Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. Pastor, I didn't know we were talking about smelling. No, we're not. We are talking about submission. But again, here's the deal. Ezekiel is telling the people about Zedekiah being chopped off from the greatest of his kingdoms, the great high and lofty place of his kingdom, and being jerked down into Babylon and planted there. And he says, I want you as the king to submit to Nebuchadnezzar. I want you to submit to the Babylonian culture. I want you to submit. And then all the leaders, as you're looking through verse 7, verse 8, all the leaders of Israel are given the exact same task. Look at this. Put them in mind. This is to the church. How many of you would say, I am part of the church of the living God? Raise your hand. Okay, great. Praise the Lord. Listen, to you, just raise your hand. To those who didn't and really wanted to but didn't really listen to me, listen to this. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Now, what does that clarify? Well, it clarifies that if the government tells you to go smoke something that's going to make you high, that you probably ought not to do it, right? Because it's going to hurt your temple. Look at verse 2. The Bible says this as it goes on from there, to speak evil of no man. Wow! All right, so how many of us are guilty of speaking against a politician like I was this morning? Okay, to, to speak evil of no man. To be what? No brawler. Gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men. You know what this is? Do you know what this is? Hey, listen, you know what this is? This is God's plan. Can you say that? This is God's plan. Yeah, it is. Now, understanding this is complicated. Because as we look at the video training of God, we're like, no, this can't be right. Why would he take us, who are the pinnacle of God's grace? I mean, the church is the pinnacle, man. We are the blessed ones. God has saved us. He's going to take us on to heaven. He's cropping us off. You're not in heaven yet. You guys know that, right? You know where we're at? He's taking us and planting us in this earth, in this soil, in this world. And he says, I want you to be a witness to everybody around you. I want you to be, I want you to be pulled down from where you think you are in Christ and be planted in that soil. You know what that does? It brings, listen, it brings humility. Look at verse 11. Ezekiel 17 and verse 11. Look at this. It brings humility. Humility, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Say now to the rebellious house. Hey, Israel of the Old Testament isn't the church of the New Testament, but certainly you see mirrors of truth. Tell me if not that's the case. Is Israel and the church different from one another? Yes, they are, totally. But do you see mirrors of Israel in the church? Absolutely. And here you see in verse 12, Say now to the rebellious house, to that church that has a hard time even getting there on Sunday morning every week. Know ye not what these things mean? Tell them. 
Behold, the king of Babylon has come to Jerusalem and hath taken the king thereof and the princes thereof and led them with him to Babylon. So these brightly colored birds cropping off the top of these trees, these are representative of Zedekiah and all of his leaders. They're planted in a different place. They're put in Babylon, in verse 13, and hath taken of the king's seed and made a covenant with him and hath taken an oath of him. He hath also taken the mighty of the land that the kingdom might be base, get this, that the kingdom might be base. What does the word base mean? Do you know? Low. Brought into humility. Brought into brokenness. That it might not lift itself up that, that by keeping of his covenant it might stand. How many times have we been humbled? How many times have we been humbled? How many times has the Lord had to say, okay, you're a big, you know, smarty pants kind of guy. I'm going to have to, I have to, you know what I'm saying? I have to sh- sh- just cut you off, put you down the ground, uh, cut you down a little bit. I was in Indiana some years ago, and God had blessed, and God had blessed, and God had blessed, and we were missionaries. God had given us so much, and we'd seen people saved, and I mean, we had the opportunity to minister to... I, I, I can't even, you know, it's, not, it's beyond my comprehension how the Lord was working and lives were being changed. And, and man, I'm sitting there with my car and I'm driving down the road and I'm praising the Lord. All right. And as I'm praising the Lord, I'm starting to feel like, man, he used me. He used me. Hey, praise the Lord. He used me. And I started to get proud. And I'm driving down the road praising the Lord. I didn't even see that stop sign, okay? I didn't even see it. I did not see the stop sign while I was praising the Lord and praising myself at the same time, okay? And this guy came through that intersection. Of course, he had every right to, and I didn't stop at the sign, and he clocked me hard. And I was like, oh, you know? And I'm sitting there on the side of the road, and I get out of the car, and I'm looking at that car, and I'm like, oh, I can't believe this, man. What are we going to do? We're right in the middle of deputation. It's going to ruin our whole stride. My wife's looking through the window at me, and she's going. And she just looked at me, and she went, calm down. Calm down. And it took her doing that to me for me to realize that God had humbled me. God had taken me from up here and had taken all of the (gasps) air out of my sails. And he got me to understand that I needed some brokenness. I needed some real understanding from him. Go to Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. I needed some real understanding from the Lord. I needed a good spanking on the backside from God. How many of you know what it feels like to get a good whack from God once in a while? The Lord God takes your sails and He completely takes the wind out of them. He completely deflates you. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1 says this, Come and let us return unto the Lord. For He hath torn and He will heal us. He hath smitten and He will bind us. Man, Zedekiah, all the leaders of Israel needed this. Eh, eh. Eh, 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 eh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they needed a good wacky doodle on the backside. And they understood. Oh no! We messed up before God. They got cropped off from the top of that tree and put down the bottom. They got put in a place that they weren't used to. They were in a strange land. And God was teaching Zedekiah. Man, he teaches us. God's punishment is so awesome. Tell me if that's not the case. So first of all, God wants to teach us His. And then second, He wants to teach us His punishment. Look at verse 19, if you will. If you've gone through and you've seen the kingdom might be based, that it might not lift itself up, but that by keeping of His covenants, it might stand. How many of us are lacking on keeping the covenants of God? You say, oh, pastor, I'm saved. Jesus Christ covered my sin. The blood has taken it all away. I don't have to obey anymore. Okay, well, I know that's what's being taught in many churches, but that is not the Bible. The Word of God has told us that grace is the power to obey. 
power to obey. Grace has been given to us, not so we'll stop obeying, but so that we will continue in His power to obey and to march forward and to love Him in His, get this, plan. That's His big plan. You say, Pastor, why? Because He knows what's good for us. Tell me if that's not the case. He knows what's good for us. He knows what's best for us. And so what does He do? Man, He comes and He gives us the best. Oh, you guys, listen to me. He wants to give you the best. How many of you want God's best? Listen to this, man. Listen to this. If you want His best, let Him go through His plan. And when you get to the point where you're too lifted up, the humility is gone. You need a little bit of... Just like it says up here. When He has to break us... Go back to Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1 again. Man, I love this. Get this. The Bible tells us that he has to break us. He has to pull us apart a little bit. He has to do some things to us. What does he say? Let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath torn. Who hath torn? God does that? Hey, wait a minute. Does God tear us apart? Does God break our legs once in a while? Yeah, he will. And so he does that so he can heal. And then he hath smitten so he can do what? Bind us up. The punishment of God is a good thing, you guys. Look with me. The punishment of God is a good thing. Look at verse 19. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, as I live, surely mine oath that he hath despised, and my covenant that he hath broken, even it will I recompense upon his own head. He's talking about Zedekiah. He's talking about King Zedekiah. Proud Zedekiah. Proud missionary Barry Seacrest. Proud whoever your name is. Proud whoever we are. Proud, proud, proud. Woo, we're so proud. Verse 20, he says, I will spread my net upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon, and will plead with him there for his trespass that he hath trespassed against me. What in the world? You know, Travis, I don't get this, man. If I were God, things would be different. Do you guys ever feel that way? All right, so... If I were God, things would be different. you say, Pastor, Travis is looking at me like, oh, no, please don't do this, Pastor. Don't go down this road, please. The fact is, I think almost everybody in here has thought, man, why is God doing that? I mean, David's honest. He's like, yeah, man, yeah. How many of us think that, man? Why is God doing this? Can I tell you something? I don't know if I were God, if I would be pleading with Zedekiah. I'd just be like, all right, Zedekiah, let me see your heart for just a second. All right, you're done. Let's see if we can get somebody else in here. How many of you think that way sometimes, man? Say, Pastor, you cold chickens all the time. So really, I don't know if you're the one that's the example for this. Yeah, you're right about that. But our God, he is merciful. He's compassionate. He is loving. His mercy never fails. Every morning, His mercy is new. He cares about you. He loves you. He loves me. He desires for us to be in Him and through Him. And God's compassion is His punishment. Get that. God's compassion is His punishment. Look at verse 21. And all His fugitives with all His bands shall fall by the sword. And they that remain shall be scattered toward all winds. And ye shall know, hey listen, one of these days you're going to know it, ye shall know that I am God. I am the Lord. Why did God punish Zedekiah? He was resisting the ordinance of God. How many of you are looking for a good whack from God? Just disobey Romans 13 too, and it'll be coming, man. You start to ignore authority, start to ignore this pastor, start to ignore the people that are in positions that God has placed there, and I'll guarantee you the punishment of God will be on you like white on rice. Understand the reason that he got punished because he resisted the ordinance of God. He tried to call out to Egypt and say, Hey, you guys, come help me out. We're going to just take over Babylon. I'm going to be the big cheese again. Man, I'm going to get up there on the top where I was at. Woo, I'm going to get back up there on the top. And, and the Lord's like, That's not what I want you to do. 
I want you to submit to me. And so instead, what did he do? He gave him recompense. The word is recompense. What is recompense? To give back in return. You guys, how many of you want some godly recompense upon you? I went to the pawn shop some years ago. I had... Stop laughing, Elizabeth. This isn't Dundalk. Yes, Elizabeth was already a part of our family. I had gone to the pawn shop, and now listen, I had gotten a hold of some silver, okay? I had been advised that I should diversify my investment. So I was diversifying a little bit of gold, a little bit of silver here and there, whatever, you know? And I had some of this silver, and I went into the pawn shop, and I thought, okay, here's the price. This is what the, the Internet says, you know. Internet never lies. You know that, right? Okay, so I was sure, you know, the Internet said this is the price. So I'm bringing this into the pawn shop. I set it down in front of this guy. And he, I mean, Verizon has nothing on this guy. I would tell you this. These people that talk to us in business... They can spin a phrase. Tell me if that's not the case. I mean, I'd be talking to some of these guys on the, on the phone about the things, the business, you know, the things I'm going, the, the, the phone service that I have and all. And, and they'd just be like, listen, sir, you need to pay $3,000 a month for your service because of these great things that you're getting. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, okay, all right, let me sign that, you know. This is me, right? This is me, Chris. Chris is like, don't ever do business with me then, Pastor, okay? Because I don't want to go in with you on that. So I'm in that pawn shop, and this guy is telling me, listen, I really can't give you any more than that. Have you ever heard this? I know that that silver, you know, that log of silver that you have is worth $5 million, but I'm going to give you $2 because that's really what I can afford to do. Well, I believed him, all right? And still to this day, I smack myself in the head and I think, man, I would never do that today, right? I mean, but do we? Tell me if that's not the case. How many times have we given ourselves the short end of the stick because we do not fully comprehend the need to listen? But listen, listen, take a moment and think, be patient. How many of us are rushing into junk? When we know it's wrong, we know it. And in our hearts, we believe. Here is the big issue today. We are allowing the conviction of the Holy Spirit to be minimized because we are certain that what we're doing is good and right. And the Bible calls it sin. But we'll say, no, but for me, it must be different. This must be different. I knew a guy in Uruguay that was with his wife with a 15-year-old and with other people as well in a, in a very intimate way. Do you understand this? Listen, he was rectifying that behavior by saying, hey, in the Old Testament, David had a lot of wives. And I'm sure some of them were underage. Are you guys getting me on this? Now, the reason it's so quiet in here is because a bunch of you are doing the same thing. Oh, pastor, I'm not doing the same thing. Yeah, just because you had to say it that way means you know what I'm saying. You and I, and I am including myself in this, listen, you and I are really losing it when it comes to conviction. And our culture has gotten to a point, even in churches, where we're just rectifying sin, making it okay. Hey, it doesn't matter that the authority says this. It doesn't matter. Hey, they're bad authority. Hey, that's a bad leader. Hey, that's a bad... We don't have to actually listen to Romans 13. When you know very well the leadership's not telling you anything against the Word of God, but just because you have some kind of feeling about them being human, that it's okay just to ignore that. And God was telling Zedekiah, submit to to, to Nebuchadnezzar. Submit to this Babylonian culture. Submit! And what do we do? No, but God, I know you can't be talking to me about that. His plan is submission. 
His plan is then to teach us submission through punishment. No real recompense comes sometimes. You know that? Our God is patient and will work with us. Look at Luke chapter 14, if you will. Look at Luke chapter 14 and verse 12. This right here is Jesus Christ. I mean, this is classic Christ. Luke chapter 14 and verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, when thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again. And a recompense be made of thee. Look at verse 13. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, call the maimed, call the lame, call the blind. How many of you are all up in this right now? You're saying, yeah, buddy, next time I invite my friends over, I'm going to tell all the people down the road that are in the gutter to come in too. Amen? Oh, no, no, I'm hearing the amens on that one. Why is that? Look at verse 14. And thou shalt be blessed. Precious promises, submission, blessing. Precious promises, okay, submission, blessing. Thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed of the resurrection of the just. Get this, my brethren and sisters, my my dear ones, retribution. What is my retribution, my punishment that's imposed for the purposes of repaying bad attitudes, wrong uh, revenge, repayment or the revenge that it would have upon me? What am I guilty of? What is my retribution? What is my recompense? You know what, my friends? I deserve right now as I'm standing before you, I deserve to burn in hell. I deserve to burn in hell. You guys get that? We deserve eternal punishment. And our God is good enough to give us what we don't deserve. So the question is, am I doing that with every enemy in my life? Am I doing that with the people down the street that I'm a little bit scared of? Am I doing that with those who are all over the city? Am I telling them of Christ? Am I expressing to them how they can be in heaven? Are any of us in trouble with the IRS? Don't raise your hands. Don't raise your hands. How many of us are going through a rough time and we owe somebody some money or we owe, even worse, the IRS? So here's the deal. A few years ago, I had this issue. All right? And my tax preparer explained to me why I was having this issue. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. She's like, listen, you got to pay it to get it taken care of. So I'm like, it's thousands of dollars. She's like, listen, you got to pay it to get it taken care of. The thing that irritates me is, you know how this is? Listen to this. The person that does my taxes was the one that made the mistake. Now, I don't know a lot of stuff about anything. So I'm just trusting them. How many of us are signing off on doctor's agreements? Signing off on... I mean, we we don't really read what we're signing sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You know those little things that pop up and say, Okay, I agree. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, "Ah, I don't want to go through that 10-page contract. So you don't read it. And you're just like, Okay, I agree. Man, you could be signing your kids away to indentured servantry. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Anything we'd be doing. But we do this. I ended up owing the IRS a bunch of money. And then I I just, I think one day I'm going to make her part of my family, you know. I'm going to put her in my will, you know what I mean. Because she helped me out so much. I listened to her. I submitted to her. And God gave me the wherewithal to understand. Because I had known her for 27 years. And I knew who she was. I knew what I'm telling you to do. I did what she told me to do. I got all the money back. I got taken care of. The Lord blessed in that situation. Because I listened. Look up here for just a second. There's only one guy that can help you out of your problem. Yeah. 
one guy. And his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So here's the last part of the message. First and foremost, God's plan. All right, let's say that together. God's plan. Second, God's power. Punishment. You're right. (laughs) We're all headed down the wrong path here. Number three. You say, Pastor, you're headed down the wrong path. We're headed down the right one. Okay, God's power. Okay, looking at verses 22 to 24, and we're done. Look at this. Thus saith the Lord God, take of the highest branch of the high seed, set it. Off from the top of his young twigs, a tender one. Does it dawn on us that our idols are idols because we don't admit they're wrong? Uh, When Pastor goes on talking about idols, he's not talking about my fetishes because my fetishes are right. Man, when the Bible tells us that this is wrong... That, that can't be wrong for me because that's right for me. Am, am, am I, are you feeling me on this? No, but you don't understand. For me, every once in a while, I just have to do this thing that the Bible says not to do. How many of you are with me on this? Do you get me? Do you understand what I'm saying? We do this. And here's the beauty. Looking at verse 22. A tender, listen to this, look. A tender twig is cropped off. Who does this sound like? Jeff O'Day, who does this sound like? Stephen, Denny, who does this sound like? A tender twig. Go to Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 2. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 2. Who does this sound like, Tony? A tender twig. Look at this. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. Now, how does a tender plant end up in a dry ground? He's cropped off from heaven and dropped down to earth. He is planted in the soil. And this tender twig, this tender one, will plant it upon a high mountain. And the eminent, look at this, in the mountain of the high of Israel will I plant it. And it shall bring forth boughs. Get this, where is the highest place in Jerusalem? It's Mount of Olives. What does the word of God tell us about this place? This incredible, interesting. Now look at this. Get and understand. The word of God tells us from Zechariah 14 and verse 4. Zechariah 14 and verse 4. This is, this is the prophecy. This is the prophecy. This is what's coming. Get this. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 4. And his feet, this is Jesus Christ, shall stand in that day, this is the beginning of the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and the west. What happens to Jesus Christ? On the highest point of Israel, his feet are planted, and he completely claves this mountain from one side to the other, there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. I'm so concerned for that hotel on top of that mountain, because they built a hotel on top of that mountain. I tell you, if today the, the, the rapture took place, and the seven-year tribulation took place, Brad, it would be 2029. You, you getting this? 2029, Jesus would come down from the sky and land his feet on the Mount of Olives. You understand this principle? He would land his feet on the Mount of Olives. What's going to happen to that mountain? It's going to split in two. This is the twig. This is our tender plant. This is the one who was, by the blood of the living way, brought to you and I. A high mountain, an equal culture. Look at Isaiah chapter 40 and verses 3 through 4. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 4. The Word of God tells us in Isaiah 40 and verses 3 through 4, you 
my friends, and I can be saved. Listen, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Verse 4 goes on and it says this, every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain shall be made what? Low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places shall be made plain. And our God, our King, our Lord is going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. But you won't see it at all. Because you will be burning in the lake of fire during that time. If it be that you didn't receive Christ now. Do you understand that? Because everything that possibly could be done for you in this age of grace has been done. And if you reject Him, He will reject you. And that's what I mean when I say the precious promises of God are given to you for submission. If you simply will submit to Him and receive Him, He will bless you with this. He will bless you with His plan. He will bless you with His punishment. He will bless you with His power. What is the punishment of God? The punishment of God is simply to tell you, if you will receive Him, you'll never feel it. His punishment is there so that you will pull back and say, yes, I'll obey. His punishment was given to Zedekiah so that Zedekiah could understand. Listen, if you'll just listen to me, he said, I'll talk with you. I'll work with you. I'll do everything to express myself to you. He says in that verse, he says, I reason. I was trying to reason with him. He says this right now to you and me. He says this, come now and let us reason together. Let us reason together. I want to love you. I want you to come to me. I want you to have heaven. I want you to be in that awesome place. I want the blood of Christ to cleanse you. How many desire to be cleansed of God? To be totally right. To be in heaven today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes for just a second? Do you remember any part of our Constitution, the Declaration of Independence? Humility seems to be in almost every line. And our culture has destroyed that. Christ's constitution is the humble, beautiful, perfect word of the living God. And every line is praise unto him. Every line is the blood of Jesus Christ. Every line is to say, I died so that you could live. I died so that you would come to me. I died so that you would be saved. I died so that you could come unto me and be saved. How many of you are saying this morning, Pastor... I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to suffer forever in a lake of fire. I know He did everything for me. And I want Him. I desire Him. Would you slip your hand up? Yes, 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 yes. I do. I desire Him. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Anybody else? I desire Him. Yes. Anybody else? I want to be saved today. I don't want to end up in the lake of fire. I want to have Christ come and teach me. I need His plan. I need that punishment, the understanding of His punishment. I need for Him to come and show me His power. I want His power in my life. But I still, there's not been a time and a place when I've given my heart to Him. Slip your hand up if that's you. I haven't done that. I haven't given my heart to him. I haven't been saved. Okay, okay, okay. Anybody else? I haven't been saved. Anybody? Stand together, won't you, dear ones? Stand together, dear ones. Those of you who slipped your hands up, those of you who are looking to be saved today, listen, you're not a 